In order to get a consistent set of imagery for our growing 2A history project, we draw cartoons of Second Amendment advocates. We draw these live during our almost having firearms expo. And sometimes in multi-hour marathon live chats, we call 2A media workshops. Our goal is to share the skills and techniques and the software that we use to create these and to inspire others to create Second Amendment content. In this series, we'll speed up the drawing of these cartoons so it's almost animated, and we'll focus on the activists and the projects that they represent. For this one, I'm going to read from the obituary for Lee Juris, written by John Taffin, and it's on the Supervell Ammunitions website. Lee E. Jarris was born on a strawberry farm in Dover, Florida in 1934. Ten months later, his parents divorced and he went with his maternal grandmother in Santa Monica, California. He spent the next 14 years there, learning to shoot and hunt in the surrounding countryside. His quarry was mostly coyotes and jackrabbits, with his first gun being a Savage Model 219, chambered in 22 Hornet, and topped with a Weaver B6. In his freshman year, he moved to Shelbyville, Indiana. It was here he had acquired a Smith & Wesson K-38 and started on the road to handgun hunting, with his first kill being a groundhog. In high school, he joined the Marine Corps Reserve, and with the encouragement of his commander, resigned the reserves and enlisted in the Marines. His shooting ability came from to the fore when he set a marksmanship record at 249 out of 250. His record stood only two months when another recruit shot a perfect 250. Lee was honorably discharged as part of the post-Korea drawdown, receiving $400 in separation pay. Combining this with the $700 in poker winnings, he headed for Indiana, where he enrolled in the Indiana College of Mortuary Science. After graduation, his new trade paid him $55 to $75 a week. He was married by this time and he needed more money, so he went to work with his stepfather's asphalt business, where he stayed for seven years. It was in this time that he started experimenting with reloading ammunition for better performance. This resulted in him virtually standing the handgun ammunition industry on its head with the starting of Supervel in 1964. At this time, the best self-defense ammunition available was the standard 38 Special with a round nose lead bullet and the 45 ACP hardball. Lee did two things to improve ammunition. Those two great improvements were a large hollow point, which really worked as it was supposed to, combined with a lighter weight, which allowed for greater muzzle velocity. The first offering from Supervel was a 38 special jacketed hollow point load for law enforcement. One of the major problems with any business is having to depend on other suppliers, and this is what eventually led to the divide, demise of Supervel. Lee's ideas were so radical and so successful, he caught the attention of major ammunition manufacturers, the same companies that he depended on to supply his brass. When the supply was shut off, it was necessary to seek brass in Europe, which worked for a time. However, expenses went way up, and by January of 1975, Supervel closed their doors. The company was gone, however, the influence continued and still lives on, and we can thank Lee for all the excellent choices we have in truly effective ammunition today for both hunting and self-defense. In 1975, Lee moved to New Mexico and started his involvement with the Automag. The Automag was originally a semi-automatic pistol chambered in 45 AMP, which was basically a rimless 44 Magnum with both factory rounds available and dies for making ammunition from 308 brass. Lee published the Automag newsletter, which was the official publication of the Automag International Club. The 44 Automag was followed by the 357 Automag, which was capable of muzzle velocities over 1700 feet per second with a 158 grain jacketed bullet. This was followed by the 41 Automag, special LE Jarris custom model. 100 Automags were offered in all three calibers with serial numbers beginning with an LEG. LEJ prefix. These guns are much sought after by collectors today. The obituary goes on to talk about some of his experiences and friendships with uh, hunters. I'm going to conclude it though uh, with the last couple of paragraphs. In the last 
In the late months of 2016, Lee commissioned Gary Reeder to build the Lee Jarris Memorial Pistol. Built on a Ruger Blackhawk, it is chambered in 475 Limebaugh. It is delivered to Lee before Christmas, and he soon had the pleasure of shooting it. It's specially marked Lee Jarris Memorial, 1934 to 2017. One doesn't have to be observant to understand what that means. Gary Reeder said, none of us are here forever, and good friends are a cherished part of our lives, never to be taken for granted. So let us know what you think. We'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video, over on gunstreamer.com or on guntube.org. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourages you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching gunwebsites.com.